What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of MENES. We're finally talking about the final Life is Strange game, Life is Strange True Colors, which, uh, final Life is Strange game for now. You know, I've been meaning to talk about this one for a while, so let's get into it. I'm talking about episode one of Life is Strange, one of five. Um, we, we start off with this character, Alex, who was briefly, like, mentioned in the comics. Um, game's made by Deck Nine. The Steph character from uh, Before the Storm comes back. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, as far as this episode one goes, we kind of figure out about Alex's powers, you know, pretty immediately. Um, she has these powers to read people's emotions and sometimes read what they're thinking. Um, and if the emotions are really strong and she's like close enough to the person, like physically, she starts to feel the emotions too so yeah so we start off she, she's going back to this town haven springs or going to this town haven springs i don't th know that she's ever been there before somehow she got separated from her family um and was put in like the foster system or something uh and, and stayed there i maybe intentionally i i don't know she just her brother had to like search her out and find her and track her down and stuff um so yeah so there's some backstory somewhere in there that i don't really know the full extent of maybe if had i chose the option about that um i would have heard more about it but i i, cho I chose to tell uh our brother gabe about the powers there um rather than telling her or telling him about our history so uh because I, I thought that would be more you know I, I hate it when people like don't know about powers in like a life is strange game you might as well just tell them right especially if we're gonna be using these powers the entire game um like in the last game when we didn't tell fucking the other kid um you know captain spirit about the powers it fucking you know backfired on me so um I don't know. I figured honesty is the best way. That's also what I told the, uh, I think Sarah was her name or something. Is that her name? I don't remember her name, uh, at the beginning. The one going with the, with the college exam or the college entrance thing where she's like asking, oh, do I like be honest or should I like make something up? And her brother says you got to be honest. And so you know, I thought that's a good policy too. So I told her to be honest and there you go. So our brother's dating this girl, uh, Charlotte, who's the mom to this kid, um, Ethan, I believe. We meet them pretty much right away when we get into town there. We reunite with our brother and they have a moment, you know, and whatnot. And then he's taking us along. He, he lives above this bar, the Black Lantern, uh, where he also works and stuff. And the first thing, we go and get these flowers for... His girlfriend there because he screwed up or something I, I, I still don't necessarily know what all of that was about um, but yeah and then he goes to give them to her so we we go to over this record shop there and Steph happens to be like a DJ running the record shop there and there's like a whole little mini game or not mini game like a section uh, where, you know, typical Life is Strange stuff. We have to search around for this list of, um, of, like, who, who, like, ordered these albums or, like, the, the list of, like, pre-ordered albums or something. We have to find it. It ends up being under this cat. And then once we find this cat toy, we can move it. There's this other guy there, uh... I played this several hours ago. My mind is not working. Uh, Gabe's friend or whatever. At first I got some like, you know, bad vibes off the guy. But like Life is Strange has definitely taught me to just like <laughs> associate all men as being bad, I guess. Like, you know, fucking Mr. Jefferson and like Warren has some creepy vibes sometimes. And then there's like that, that guy that's name I he name I can't think of from Deck Nine's, you know, Before the Storm, um, 
who's a creepy guy. You know, there's a lot of bad guys in Life is Strange. So, I, I got some bad vibes off him at first, and then, like, you know, now he's fine. I, I feel like he's... But he's definitely trying to, like... Like, make a thing between him and Alex, and... I'm not going for it, you know? Um... But anyway. So, yeah. His friend there, um... What were we talking about? Yeah, he's there at the record store, like, trying to help you along and trying to help you find this stuff, and... He's making jokes to you and stuff, and doing all this stuff, and then... Um... Eventually, your brother comes over, and... You know, you found the album, but you just, like, stash it in your backpack, and... You show it to him later whenever um, he takes you to his apartment there. And he's like, he's basically like, oh yeah, I mean, this is your apartment, essentially. Because I, I barely use it. I'm always over there with Charlotte, you know, my girlfriend. And so this place is basically going to be yours. And it's like, wow, this is a pretty cool pad, you know, sweet, you know. Um, you'll have to, like a guitar there for you. You can play an optional song there. There's a lot of very, very musical, this game, uh... You can listen to a lot of different records, and you can recommend stuff, and play the guitar. I mean, I, Life is Strange is generally musical, but particularly I feel like this entry is very musical for whatever reason. So, um, in, in the midst of this song off of this album that you, you got from the record store there, you guys are having a good moment, and then a guy comes who's the girl... Who's, the girl from earlier, the college girl, or who's going to be a college girl, who's trying to put in the interview for to get into this college. Her boyfriend, Mac, comes in and is pissed off at your brother because he, he starts beating the shit out of him because he thinks that they're, like, doing stuff behind his back, even though he's literally... Gabe's just literally helping him to... Uh, helping her, anyway, to to do this interview thing, like, get a really good thing put together for it. So it's kind of a misunderstanding. Plus he has, like, Charlotte as his girlfriend, so it's like, what the hell? Like, why would you think that they were, like, cheating together on both of your relationships there? Anyway, so he, like, starts beating the shit out of him, and, like, Alex feels this, and, and so she gets really, really angry and starts beating the shit out of him. And, um, as far as I did, I mean, I don't, I, maybe there was an option to kind of, like, prevent that. I didn't even see that. Um, and so the, the, the whole rest of the thing, she's very apologetic about this situation. And then you have, you have an option later to kind of, like, tell his girlfriend about it or not tell his girlfriend about it. Um, Mac's girlfriend, that is. I chose to, like, not tell her that... I was the one who beat him up or whatever, because, like, that's what he wanted, and basically they would have broke up if, if I had told or something. Maybe that's bad. Maybe maybe I fucked up there. I don't know, but that's kind of what I decided. Um, so your brother basically has to go off to get, you know, put together, you know, have his wounds kind of healed or whatever, so you're... You're there covering your ship, so you have to, like, go and take the order of, um, this lady, uh, and this guy. What's his name? Ducky and Diane. Uh, you have to take their orders and then bring them back to the, to Jed, the, like, the bartender there. And then the, this is also that part where Mac talks to you when you go back to, like, clean off the table in the back there. And then Steph's there and you can play this game that was, like, guessing what album or what song um based on album covers and stuff that she was uh trying to put otherwise you have to take a shot basically um i thought i had the right one but apparently i didn't and it was a little bit harder than i i was anticipating but yeah whatever i mean i'm pretty sure it was between like one or two of them and stuff but yeah, so then after that, your brother comes back once you get done with that. And then, uh, you, you both go onto the roof to hang out. And this is where, uh, he's like, well, we need to talk. And then that's where I told him about the powers and all of that. And he took the information pretty well. He's like, oh, you have superpowers. And my character's like, well, it's like a super curse, you know, basically. 
Um, and we find out, because this kid told us earlier that he was going to go off to the mines or whatever, uh, to like go exploring. We find out that this is a thing that he actually did, and I kept his secret because he told me to. I don't know why I did that. That was really stupid of me. Um, so we, we run off to the mines to go find this kid, and uh, he gave us this comic book, so you have to like kind of compare the comic book to locations um, around the mines, like before the mines, to kind of understand how he got into the mines. It, it doesn't... When I read it earlier, it didn't make much sense as a comic book, but when it it's it when it's seen as just like a piece to a puzzle that you're supposed to do in the game, then it makes like sense as that. It doesn't really make sense as a narrative on its own, though. I get what they were going for, but it, that was kind of weak in that regard. Um, so yeah, eventually we find this kid. He's like a, in this alcove across uh this like rickety log there's this whole thing about like they were gonna blow up a certain area or a certain building or something and that's gonna like like cause you know reverberations or something um but i, I thought our brother had called that off or like told them like hey this kid's lost don't do that basically um so, but, but anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. So you cross this, this log here, and you're tied to your brother there. And I don't know why you had to be tied to him specifically. You could, is that like a tree or a rock or something you could tie Alex to? I, I, I don't get that really, but uh, for the plot is, is why. So you cr climb across this log, and then when you get closer to this kid, she starts feeling scared too, because he's really scared. And... So you have to, like, get him to calm down. So you're trying to tell him this stuff. But you get to see what he's seeing, which is, like, this giant ravine. Like, the way he's seeing it, it's, like, a giant mouth with, like, teeth or whatever. It's, like, a monster or whatnot. So slowly you have to, like, get him back over the thing. And then once you're back over there, you hear, like, a, a boom. Like, a explosion or whatever. And it's, like... Oh, so they're actually blowing this thing up then, I guess? And and so... Um, so they blow that up, and then, like, rocks start coming down the mountain, and you're like, oh, shit. And then uh, Gabe's friend there, like, cuts the rope that's attached to your brother, and he, like, falls into the ravine, I guess? Like, I don't know if he's dead or what. I, that's, I think that's the, the assumption, is that he is now dead, which is crazy, because you are trying to build up this whole connection to him earlier in the episode. That's like a big part of the episode there. Um, if not dead, at least injured, because he fell down this ravine. So, yeah, and then he pushes you out, because he has to push you out of the way so you don't get crushed by rocks, uh, too. You're, all three of you are safe, but the brother, not doing so hot, you know, or... To, we're to assume that's where the episode like kind of cuts off so um i mean as far as like a first episode goes it's a little odd i feel like all all of the previous games yeah i mean all three of the previous games you kind of get the sense of what the game is going to be about through the first episode is the game going to be about, like, her, like, getting over the loss of her brother, or, um, about this kid and his mom, like, trying to go on without, like, this father figure, um, you trying to fill in as a spot for the brother, it, it's not exactly clear, uh, but the end of the, like, First Life is Strange episode, you, you know that, like, Max has these powers, Chloe knows now, there's like this weird stuff going on with the tornado, you know that there's some kind of plot against Rachel Amber, and you need to find her, there's a lot of things that they set up very well in that episode, and you, in uh, Nathan Prescott, and all this other stuff, everything's set up really well there, to understand, even uh, Before the Storm, episode one, there's a lot going on there, and, and you know, you're building up this uh, relationship with Rachel Amber, and it's like this whole thing, and you know, that's very much, um, there's a lot that 
it explains exactly like what this story is kind of kind of be about you know the the second game uh life is strange 2 you know daniel has his powers and like you know you're running from the cops it's like it's it explains it it's it, it makes sense you know here i don't i have no idea what's gonna happen you know and i, I don't know if that's I don't know. I don't know what to really expect. and I, I don't know how to feel about that. In terms of, like, how was the episode, I feel like parts of it worked. Uh, gameplay, it felt more, very more gameplay focused. It didn't feel as focused on, like, building our characters. What it felt focused on was introducing a bunch of characters. It doesn't really give us, like, doesn't get us, like, emotionally attached to a bunch of characters. It just kind of introduces us to a bunch of characters, which... I know there's like four of our episodes to start off, but it's kind of a weak start to a Life is Strange game. I don't know much about these people yet. And it's not to say that in other Life is Strange games there were characters that you maybe didn't know a lot about from the first episode. But I feel like it was more established, you know. Maybe not. I don't know. But that's like half of what this episode is, is just getting introduced to people course looking around a little bit in each of the environments is is a thing um but it felt very focused on the gameplay versus like for, for a game about a girl who has powers that like get you to listen to people's emotions and stuff it's very detached from that concept you know they don't necessarily do a whole lot with that specifically yet like i guess the thing with the kid and then like all that 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 was interesting ish i still don't feel like i did much with that you know and i, I can't really see how my my choices are gonna have a lot of impact either um i guess that's again most life is strange games you don't always know how your choices are gonna impact things but you gen generally have like tend to have a sense of how things are gonna go I didn't break up the two I mean that might be like the most impactful thing I did was um to keep Mac and his girlfriend together but I still don't know what that's gonna mean to me or to my story you know um I just it's, it's just different I don't have a really clear sense of where things are going and um maybe that's a good thing maybe that's a bad thing but I, I feel like um I kind of had a similar problem with Life is Strange 2 at a lot of points um, it'll be interesting to see where the story goes, but as far as, like, a first episode, it was kind of dull by comparison to all other first episodes of any Life is Strange, uh, game, you know? There were a lot of moments that just, a lot of it just felt, like, um, less interesting than it probably should have been, you know? Like, it didn't really do a, a great job at getting me invested in stuff. I mean, I, I may, I'm, you know, somewhat invested in my main character and Alex there and her brother and her relationship to him. But now that he's out of the picture, potentially, that the strongest element to that there is gone, you know. I mean, I made friends with all of these other characters, but... I don't know, there wasn't, there's nobody that's like a Chloe, you know, that, that's gonna like run off on adventures with me. You know, maybe like Steph or something, but I feel like Life is Strange is always kind of about your character and then one other character. And then there's a bunch of side characters too, obviously, that have a lot to do with the story, but there's always some kind of main relationship in the game and... Not even just, like, a romantic one. In Life is Strange 2, I would say that's between Daniel and his brother, you know? Like, that makes sense. There's always somebody there like that, but... Um... I don't know. I, I don't... I don't... That's the problem. I don't know, you know? It's just... It doesn't... I... I doesn't really establish a lot for, very well. Um... It's like a brief overview of the locations and the people that might be in the story but like i i have no attachment to them yet you know and i mean they're okay all of them are okay it's just i don't i don't know why i should care yet you know like that's the thing and 
Not that I don't want to care. Obviously, I'm going to play the rest of the game, and maybe it'll, in retrospect, make this first episode better, but I feel like it's pretty weak compared to other Life is Strange first episodes, you know? So, um... Yeah, which it's just, it's kind of a little bit disappointing in that regard. Um, not to say it was bad, it's just, you know, not really what I was expecting, so. We'll, we'll see how it stacks up, um, going forward. That's, that's like about all there is to talk about, honestly. Like, usually I'd have more to theorize about or like talk about, but I don't, I genuinely don't know where this is going. Um, well, I can only assume... If the brother dies or if he gets injured or something, then that's what the story is going to be about. How everyone deals with that since he was kind of an important person to a lot of people in this town. We're going to have to take over for him, you know, in terms of like the bar job and like other things. Or it's going to be an emotional story about us dealing with loss, kind of like in Before the Storm, which could be cool. I don't know, it was a very abrupt ending to the first episode, and, and we'll see where that goes. Good for a cliffhanger, but it's really got me unable to see where the future of the story is, you know? And I, I know very little about this game. I literally probably only know what I've seen so far. I can't think of any spoilers I've had at all, so... We'll see what happens, you know? I don't know. Maybe the brother's fine. I, I have no clue, you know? But at the moment, it's kind of played up to seem like he's dead or something, you know? So I guess we'll see in the next episode. Um, I haven't got a clue. So <laughs> Life, Life is Strange, Two Colors, Episode 1. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. So I don't know what to make of it. You know? Slightly disappointing, I guess, if, if we're going to put a label on it. But I don't hate it. I, I like our main character I, well enough. I mean, I feel like by the end of each other Life is Strange episode, like I said, I liked our main characters more because I understood them more in those episodes. But, I mean, we have this kid from the foster system, I guess. We kind of get the sense that that was a rough upbringing. She knows how to fight and stuff. Uh, but we only get little glimpses into all of that, so hopefully we'll get more in the future to flesh out her character and, and the other characters and whatnot, so. Um, until next time, this has been Emmy NES saying keep it classic, stick around for more reviews, underrated games, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Emily, out.